And we are back now with the kickoff of our special series, The Secret Lives of Teens. We're talking about some issues that teens commonly deal with, but also commonly hide from their parents. Maria Shriver is here. She's the parent of four children. One is still a teenager. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Thanks so much. Well, we're kicking off this series with a big topic, anxiety. More and more kids are suffering from it. So we gathered a group of teens together to talk about anxiety, why they seem to have it, what we as parents can learn from it, how we contribute to it. Take a look. 15-year-old Anna Marie was a straight-A student. I would always have trouble breathing when I was feeling anxious and I'd kind of feel like my chest tighten. 17-year-old Jake was a popular athlete. It's a lot of fleeting thoughts in my head, um, a lot of fear, um, but I don't really know what I'm afraid of. Today, an estimated one in 10 teens experiences anxiety so severe that it disrupts their lives. Everyone that I know has some form of anxiety. That's scary. We went to Newport Academy, a behavioral treatment center, to talk to these yeah, high schoolers absolutely. about the anxiety from parents, friends, and school. How many of you kept your anxiety a secret? Well, for me, because that was definitely a big thing, was hiding it. So showing things like fear and sadness were almost taboo. I didn't see um, any other people in my life struggling with anxiety, and so I never wanted to like show anyone how anxious and stressed out I really was. So many parents today are referred to as, quote, helicopter parents. They are, you know, trying to get you the best SAT tutors. They're trying to get you after school help. They're trying to get you to get a scholarship on a sports thing. You guys are all nodding. Is that causing anxiety? Absolutely. Yes. 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 <laughs> so from a really early age, I was like, exposed to the idea that if you don't get into a good college, you're not gonna be successful in life. You're gonna amount to nothing. Uh, and so I was really stressed out about getting good grades. Another stressor, pretending online to be someone they weren't. Would, did social media exacerbate your anxiety? On social media, I was a different person. I was having fun all the time. I was outgoing, when in reality I wasn't, and it was causing me a lot of anxiety to keep that up. Experts say while some anxiety in teens is normal, there are warning signs it's become a problem. Probably the biggest issue is one of avoidance. So teens that are anxious tend to avoid things that they find frightening. And this can be going to school, this can be social relationships, not going to work. To numb themselves, some teens secretly use alcohol or drugs. I started to lead a double life. I mean, it was basically wake up in the morning, like, you know, get dressed and everything, be really nice to my mom. I love you, mom, and she drops me off. And then I walk on to school and I'm known there as the stoner kid. And your mother had no idea that when you got out of that car and said, I love you, mom, that you were a druggie mm -hmm. in school. She had no idea, no. Others turned to self-harming behavior, like cutting. One survey shows nearly one in five college students have tried it. Explain that to me, I'm a mom. It's hard for me to understand how cutting yourself actually helps. It kind of took my mind away from the emotional pain and I would completely forget about everything that I was dealing with because like something else hurt. <laughs> Through treatment here, these teens say they've learned healthier ways to cope. And a big cause of my anxiety was um, the fear of the unknown, the fear of what might happen. Um, and so one thing that really helps me is just trying to stay in the moment. The biggest tool for me is probably honesty. Uh, honesty with myself of, for where I'm really at and honesty like with the people that are here to help. There's me in the hall. So experts say honesty is the key. We have to encourage our children to talk to us about what they're feeling, what they're going through. And I know, Matt, that's not always easy. No, I have a 13-year-old boy, and when you say encourage them to talk, I think boys are more reluctant to talk about some of these issues than girls are. They are, but get them in the car, drive with them, they talk more. At least that's what I've discovered. But we are going to talk actually about boys and what seems to be happening a lot with Internet addiction and boys. So that'll be tomorrow. Maria Shriver, thank you very much.